When the counter-attack comes it will be spearheaded by western main battle tanks like the Leopard and Challenger. The question is, what's going to stop them? The T-90 series is in short supply with the T-90 is still the most numerous, is it good enough? The T-90 was introduced after the T-80 failed to live up to its hype. Although fast and agile the T-80 had a gas-guzzling gas turbine engine and was mechanically unreliable. The T-80 suffered heavy casualties during the First Chechen War, although a lot of these were due to poor tactics and training, however further production was shelved. The T-90 is essentially a modernization of the T-72, using the best features of the T-80, and it was intended to fill the gap before delivery of the T-95. The T-95 would also be known as Object 195 but due to a lack of funds it would be cancelled in 2010 and the work amalgamated into the T-14 Armada project. With a crew of three, the T-90 is propelled by an 840-horsepower 12-cylinder engine, allowing it to reach speeds of 60 km per hour on roads and 50 off-road. It is capable of firing the advanced 9M119 reflex anti-tank guided missile system, which is designed to strike tanks with explosive reactive armor or helicopters. In terms of protection of its own, the T-90 is protected by a combination of Contact 5 explosive reactive armor on the hull and turret as well as multi-layered steel armor. The T-90A would adopt a welded turret from an Indian specification instead of the cast turret on the T-90, an engine upgrade to 1,000 horsepower and Buran night thermal sights. At the time of the invasion of Ukraine, Russia had approximately 200 T-90 as with an additional 200 in storage, whose quality was undetermined. During the invasion, the Russians have lost or had captured 35 T-90 as. So why has the T-90A been such a failure? For one, the tank is just an improved version of the T-72 and as such, it exhibits its many flaws, some, particularly in electrical components, have been eliminated, but others persist. There is however the question of its gun range. Today's tanks are capable of striking opposing tanks at a range of up to 5,000 meters. Unfortunately, due to the inherent problems associated with using the T-72 as its base, the gun cannot be elevated sufficiently to stretch out the range and as a result, the T-90 struggles to match Western top-tier MBTs on the critical question of who gets off the first shot. New T-90s are struggling to even get the Sosnyu sights installed so at this point it's highly unlikely that they could even see the target let alone hit it. The T-90's gun, the 2046, also called the D-81TM, is a 125mm L-48 smoothbore. It is inferior in all aspects to the Western competition. The first issue is metallurgical technology, Russians are quite behind on that, and their main gun cannot fire a round equivalent to the Sabo fired by an Abrams. As each round doesn't have as much propellant, the muzzle velocity is lower, decreasing accuracy. The overall accuracy was not considered a problem by the Soviet Army as the gun was intended for combat in Western Europe at ranges of 1,000 meters or less due to the density of the urban terrain and mountains and forests. The tank's next problem is that it is manufactured with a low-cost mindset. The T-90A is a cheap tank, with an estimated export cost of between $2.5 to $3 million, to put that into perspective the Abrams costs three to four times that much. When designing the T-72, the Soviet Union was still using the mass attack tank tactics from World War II, which put more focus on overwhelming numbers rather than true quality and the ability of the tank to survive on its own. As a result, each component is not the best, but rather a functional solution. Then there is the armor, as it's born from the T-72, it would have been excellent in the 70s and 80s in defeating the expected threats. However, things changed, and the armor didn't improve significantly at all. Obviously, 
the fitment of ERA would have helped, but the T-90 it was only equipped with Contact 5 which was excellent in 1985, and passed numerous tests against penetrators of the time, but the West developed, and the penetrators improved and frankly Contact 5 is now largely obsolete. The poorer grade armor has made worse by the gun and the tanks need to close on its target, the reduction in distance exposing the tank's vulnerabilities. The Chechens came up with a novel idea to undermine the tank's survivability against RPGs. T-90s were frequently knocked out by three or four hits from a RPG-7. They would fire an RPG-7 from close range, within 50M, to trigger the explosive reactive armor protection, and then re-attack the exposed tank armor underneath with two or more RPG hits, again from close range, eventually forcing a penetration. Then of course there is the eternal problem of the Russian tank and their reliance on an autoloader. Now obviously the reduction in crew is a massive thing and it is faster, but the positioning of the ammo in a circle around the turret make it susceptible to a catastrophic explosion if the tank is penetrated. This situation has been largely addressed in the T-90M with an exterior ammo bustle but for the T-90A it's still an issue and this gives you the characteristic jack-in-the-box turret toss. Apart from the fighting in Ukraine, the T-90 has also been proven to be a big failure in the Syrian civil war and recently in the Russian invasion of Ukraine. When Moscow intervened in Syria in 2015, the Syrian rebels had the American TOW-2A missiles, and here the big scandal happened. Many film videos show the Syrian rebels firing the TOW missiles onto the T-90A tank and knocking it out completely. The T-90A is fitting with Stora-1, this laser warning system detects the incoming ATGM threat laser system and automatically orientates the turret in the direction of the threat. It then triggers the grenade launchers creating an off-board aerosol screen. The composition of this cloud is claimed to screen the tank against laser rangefinders and designators and is also claimed to be sufficiently hot to seduce infrared homing weapons away from the MBT. The Stora is meant to work against the toe which shows that either it isn't that effective or in these circumstances wasn't working. The biggest issue for Russia is that with the sanctions starting to bite there is a need for the manufacturers to start downgrading certain componentry reliant on Western technology. For example, they are running out of Sosnyu sites and have already started using locally made older solutions. What happens when the poor T-90A gets worse and not better? When the upgrades to T-90M cease if they haven't already? Then of course you have the crews with total tank losses now approximately 1,907, according to Oryx, you can be rest assured that a significant number of qualified men have been killed, who would ordinarily have helped to man the T-90A and get the very best out of it. In conclusion, it's clear to see that the T-90A is going to struggle against the Leopards, Challenger and Abrams, if the mobile Ukraine ATGM systems don't take them out long before any form of tank-on-tank -tank action occurs. The myth of invulnerable and well-designed Russian tanks has been crushed and frankly so has their sale potential on the export market. Thanks for watching. Please drop a like and subscribe.